what does it mean to know something? When talking to online atheists, to know something, or that which relates to knowledge, is to be certain of something. To really, really know it, and to know that you know it. And I, as an atheist, and let's face it, a reasonable person, don't agree with that. Or at least I mostly don't agree with it. I don't know which online atheist he's been talking to, but if I heard one saying this, I'd feel the need to correct them. Although it might turn out that I don't have to. Let's do this. Greetings, fellow space travelers. Bionic Dance here. So I don't know this fella to whom I'm responding, but it doesn't matter. He's wrong, and I'm gonna point out how and why. But first, let's talk about how sloppy English terminology can be. The fact is that many really important words have multiple meanings, and we often take shortcuts with our vocabulary because it is very clunky to do otherwise. And this allows the less than honest debaters to play fast and loose with their arguments. I, Lady the Reverend Catherine the Marginally Acceptable of House Far, do solemnly swear on my copy of Episode 4, A New Hope, that I will, for the sake of clarity and integrity, explicitly inform all within earshot should I find the need to change the definition for word I'm using mid-argument. For example, to know something. Speaking completely literally, the only thing anyone knows is that they exist. Everything else could be illusion, delusion, or some other kind of illusion. And yes, we can only operate at levels of confidence because true knowledge is impossible. However, we still say we know something when there can be no reasonable doubt. Because saying, I am firmly convinced by sufficient reason, evidence, and experience, Every time we want to say that we know X is true. And if we just say we're confident, someone will say, Ah, but you don't know, do you? It is really difficult to say so many important things without at least potentially being misconstrued. And this fella does it a fair bit. The reason for this strange move from a more robust understanding of knowledge is something like a warranted or justified true belief to being certain that you know is because of their attempt to employ the term atheism in a way that means a lack of belief. Ah, uh, yes, because the more commonly known but completely dishonest definition of atheism being changed to more accurately reflect the position of huge swaths of non-believers is some sinister plot rather than an attempt to be taken on our own terms instead of being expected to defend a straw man. But what do you really expect from people whose beliefs haven't changed for 2,000 plus years? Of course they expect the definition of atheism to stay the same. But definitions have always been a moving target. The dictionary Dictionary is a living document, and if theists insist we use their definition of atheism, we'll just have to find or make up a new one that actually describes our actual position actually. Much like their god allegedly made them sick and commanded them to be well, theists seem to want to tell atheists what they think and command them to defend it. I want to talk about why this creates absurd outcomes. First, certainty is not really an epistemic concept, it's a psychological one. My being certain about my belief X means that I have a certain subjective psychological experience or disposition to that belief being absolutely or unassailably true. I challenge anybody to find just one definition of confidence that means anything other than trust and which includes the word absolute. I looked in dictionaries and encyclopedias and didn't find even one instance of that being the case. And if you happen to find one, please explain why you think that, of all the definitions out there, that's the one atheists are using. And then ask atheists if it really is the one they're using. And then, please, try to explain why you're not completely full of crap. The fact is that, by a very strict definition, we don't actually know anything and can only be confident, can only trust what we think is so. Because everything that we think we know is on a subjective basis. Because that's how we take in data. And confidence is not absolute. It's about odds, the chance that something is true. Same with doubt and how unlikely we think something is so. How much confidence a person has in a proposition is also a moving target and can be raised or lowered with the introduction of new data. And we can always be wrong about things we thought we knew or thought were false. 
This means that whether or not I have certainty in some belief I hold is irrelevant to the question of if that belief is true or false, well-evidenced or not, rational or irrational. That statement is quite false, because it describes completely blind confidence that was formed in a vacuum. But my confidence, at least, in a proposition is 100% based on the evidence for that proposition. The less evidence, the less testing of the data, the lower my confidence that any conclusions made from the data are valid ones. In fact, Dude Boy here seems to be working backward from a conclusion to finding data to support it, rather than experimenting with and interpreting data to see where that leads him. And that's just dumb. And let me just preface what comes next with the disclaimer. No theist, apologist, or philosopher means by belief, atheism, or theism, or any question about them, anything to do with that kind of psychological Cartesian certainty. It's often not even in the realm of consideration at all, and when it is brought up, it's almost always to reject it as a metric for epistemic responsibility. And yet, theism doesn't just make purely philosophical ivory tower claims. Most religions will make scientific claims about the world around us and how it works, and it's on that basis where much of the disbelief regarding theism rests. Because when what we're told is so is put up against what we can see, what we can detect, upon what we can experiment, what we're told is often utterly false. And that calls into question the rest of the religion. So the question becomes this. Do you want to debate the position of actual atheists, or would you rather assign us our position before the debate even starts? And any deviation from your idea of what an atheist is will not be tolerated. Which of those two sounds reasonable? Which of those would you accept being done to you? Why is this important? Well, in their attempt to recast the meaning of atheism to be a lack of belief, moving it out of the realm of propositional knowledge into the realm of trivial, subjective, autobiographical description. I mean, imagine I said that theism was just the fact of someone having a belief in God. And how trivially true that would be as a description of the person. I'm sorry, but he's one of those people who speaks a lot but says very little. I'm going to be skipping around a bit to get to the meat of his argument, and as usual, you can check my work if you want to because I've linked the original video in this one's description. And not to belabor the point, but again, the meaning of atheism is changing to more accurately reflect reality. The fact is that most outspoken atheists would actually prefer not to be having this conversation, and it's only because of how intrusive religion can be that we're even discussing it. And the fact is that we wouldn't even be having the conversation if you lot weren't throwing around your supernatural claims. We really wouldn't. But you do throw around those claims, and I don't believe them. And if you ask me why I don't believe them, I will point to specific claims made by religious people and point out how there is no real-world evidence to support it. So I don't believe it. That's the basis of my atheism. Theists made claims. I checked those claims. Those claims didn't pass even the most cursory testing, much less more extensive testing, and thus I discard them. I don't have a burden of proof because my atheism, or rather my continued atheism, I've never been a believer, is the result of theists failing their own burden of proof. I'm not an atheist because I've proved there is no God. I'm an atheist because you can't prove there is one. They lack a belief that God exists in the autobiographic sense, but they're agnostics about it because they do not know that they know that a God or a gods do not exist. That is, they lack knowledge. And once again, this is a case of terminology being updated to more accurately describe reality versus stick in the mud people who cannot let go of the outdated version. When I say I'm an agnostic, I do indeed mean that I lack knowledge. But what I'm saying by it when I call myself an agnostic is that I lack data. There is insufficient information by which to say that a god exists, which is why I don't believe in one. I have insufficient information to move from not believing in a god to believing in one. But I am not saying that I'm an atheist about just one god, which is another mistake theists seem to make, assuming an atheist means their god and no others. Many theists seem to think that, as an atheist, I'm declaring that no gods exist, and most Abrahamic theists seem to think that I mean that Yahweh or Jehovah schmuck exclusively. To many, it seems as though atheism is a broad and sweeping statement about all gods ever. That's not true. I just have no belief in 
in any of the gods I've heard about, and haven't made up any of my own to believe in either. However, I will say that certain specific gods definitely don't exist as described in their holy texts. To pluck a random example out of the air, the protagonist of the Bible is definitely not real. There are simply too many logical inconsistencies, incorrect historical claims, and deeply disprovable scientific claims for that god to be real. Even if the Bible is attempting to describe a deity that actually does exist, the god described in here is definitely not real. But maybe someone else's god, or a god humans have never heard of, might exist. But I have no reason to believe in one, no knowledge of such a creature. And so I don't. I don't even consider the matter, because I don't have sufficient knowledge to even start thinking about it. To sum up in big print, easy reader terms, I'm an agnostic because there is knowledge I lack. I'm an atheist because I cannot believe without that knowledge. And I'm an apistivist because I won't use faith to come to conclusions. Often what counts for certainty for them is something like what we can be clearly perceived by the senses. Which inevitably leads to Thea saying nonsense like, You can't see air, you can't see germs, you can't see gravity, Which is why I've begun to use the word detect instead. We can't detect God, be it with our senses, with machines, with anything. We have no way to show that God even might exist outside of our own imagination. We can't detect God with something other than our senses any more than we can see or hear the old bastard with them. The best we can do is smell the bullcrap coming from his fan base. Then, then this creates some extremely bizarre and totally counterintuitive results that even the atheist probably doesn't want. A lot of things are counterintuitive. A globe-shaped Earth and heliocentrism are counterintuitive, for example. Yet most reasonable people agree that they're true based on the available data and extensive experimentation. As preschoolers, I'm sure most of us spun around and around until we got dizzy. You know. For fun. Of course, if we got too dizzy, it wasn't fun anymore. And so, in an attempt to undizzy myself, I would spin around in the other direction to undo it. Which, of course, didn't work, despite it making intuitive sense to my four-year-old brain. And that seems to be the scientific level on which most theists work, even as adults. They seem to care more about whether something feels correct than about whether or not it actually is. That's where we get fallacious apologetics like the watchmaker argument or the Kalam cosmological argument. They sound great on paper, but don't survive a real-world sniff test. Imagine that Christian theism was true for the sake of argument. Fine, if I must. But I have to say that this feels a little unfair. I've had too many theists refuse thought experiments that start with the hypothetical proposition that God isn't real for this to feel fair. And tonight at midnight, Jesus returns bodily and all the world sees this, and the day of judgment begins. All of humanity observes God on the throne of heaven judging the world. We now have empirical observations and sense experience. What do you mean the whole world experiences this? If Jesus came back bodily, how would we know it? I mean, he's just one dude, and the earth is like really big. Where does he appear? Everywhere? How? Are we watching him on the news? On YouTube? Go to the tubes and type in second coming on camera and just see what comes up. Should we believe all of that? Never mind that if this was going to happen on camera, it should have happened before the 1990s. Because it's so easy to fake up footage now, even just on a desktop at home, that mere imagery isn't going to be good enough to go, Yep, that's Jeebus. I'd know him anywhere. What kind of peer-reviewed experiments would be done to make sure that what we're seeing is real and that we're not, say, being totally punked by a bunch of teenage frat aliens? Oh, don't go rolling your eyes at that. Being on Gemini Jackass is far more likely than the existence of an all-powerful super being, and you know it. Point being that there is no silver bullet scenario that gets a rational, empirical person to God belief. You're going to have to do this the hard way. This means that we would all have real knowledge that God exists. No, what it means is that we have real experiences that strongly suggest God is real. But we could be dreaming, we could be insane, we could be being tricked. We can't just trust what our eyes tell us sometimes. Again, there is no silver bullet, and no empirical knowledge claims are ever 100% proved. You're still going to have to do this the hard way. And I know some believers already gnashing their teeth, saying that these standards are too strict. 
But these are the standards used for absolutely everything, not just your god. And look at the sheer number of things accepted as factually so by scientists. Whether he means to or not, what this guy is really asking for is for us to lower the bar theists must jump in order to prove God is real. But if their God is as badass as they say, then the most basic scientific test should be a piece of cake. They're saying that their God can't even meet the simplest challenge to prove his existence, and we have to relax our standards to accommodate. And I'm saying no. But according to the online atheist, and the meme that they want to use to support atheism being a lack of belief, this would also mean that now no one would have God beliefs anymore because they would now have God certainty. Oh, this old canard trying to claim that beliefs and knowledge are mutually exclusive. Are we seriously going to go down that rabbit hole? Interestingly, if I have knowledge of something, it kind of helps the belief along just a bit. How many things do you know that are true, but you also don't believe are true? Does that even sound possible? Knowledge gives us greater confidence in our beliefs. Remember, the only thing that we know with 100% certainty is that we exist as a thinking, experiencing entity. Everything else is guesswork, evidence, and confidence. So let's suppose God does hold a face reveal party, and suppose we accept that he's real. You now know God exists, but you don't believe he exists. Am I right? Or maybe God Boy here has switched definitions of believe on us and is now using it solely to mean guess, hypothesize, or suspect, rather than describing a high level of evidence-based confidence. Which is rather on the dishonest side if you think about it. Remember, for the online atheist, knowledge is related to certainty, not b true belief. Even if that's true of the atheists he's encountered, it's not true of all of us online atheists. And frankly, belief should naturally come from knowledge. That's called informed belief. What Dude Boy here seems to be talking about is blind belief. In other words, faith. But when blind belief becomes informed belief and crosses some invisible and probably moving threshold into knowledge or certainty, suddenly you stop believing anymore. According to this guy. Hands up if you think that makes no sense at all. But this would mean that the Southern Preacher, that those like Aaron Ra and Matt Dillahunty and Seth Andrews and Bionic Dance and others love to mock the Preacher who says, I know that I know that I know that I know that God raised Jesus from the dead, would be able to properly state under this metric of belief and certainty laid out by the online atheist that they lack a belief in God because they have knowledge, i.e. certainty, that God exists. I wonder what kinds of arguments this guy would make if he didn't straw man, twist, misconstrue, reinterpret, or uncharitably take pedantically the arguments of atheists. I wonder what kinds of arguments he'd have if he had to argue what atheists so obviously mean. This means that those preachers would be just as much of an atheist as Ra and Dillahunty and Andrews and Bionic Ah, oh, forget it. Claim to be. <sighs> Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Now, if they want to come back and say, but you can't know because it's wrong, then what they would be implicitly saying is that atheism isn't merely a lack of belief, but is some kind of truth claim about reality. This is part of the problem right here. Atheism is not like theism. They're not similar. You don't have atheists the way you have Christians or Muslims or even just deists or pantheists. There are those who believe, and we are not one of you. There are those who believe, and then there is the entire rest of the universe that does not. We're just not in your religious fan club. That's it. If you didn't ever mention religion, neither would we. If you lot would shut up and quit intruding, we probably wouldn't even think about it. So no, atheism isn't a truth claim about anything, but it can be a criticism of or conclusion regarding someone else's god claim. I don't believe in any of the gods I've heard about, and I don't even think about the ones I've never heard of. I have no god belief, so I'm an atheist. Okay, so I didn't skip quite as much as I thought I would upon first viewing his video. Oh, and by the way, please try to keep the comments about thinking he was Steven Anderson at first to a minimum. I was confused too, but it's not him, blah blah blah. I get it, but please think of my poor inbox. Anyway, I do have some thank yous uh, for my Amazon wishlist. This is Feel Away.
I'm assuming feline way, feeler way. Uh, but basically what you do is you plug this thing into an outlet and like these canisters emit pheromones that are supposed to make your cats get like, you know, friendlier. Uh, I can't tell if it's working or not. They are attacking each other less, but not, not at all. And they're certainly not friendly enough to like snuggle up to each other like cute little kitties ought to. So, uh, well, whatever. Uh, there's this. And speaking of cats, there is also this. You see, it's it's like the band Kiss, but with cats, right? And it says, hiss. If you see what I'm saying, right? Now, naturally, of course, I lost the little thank you sheets. This one's just uh, an inventory sheet. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they were both sent to me by the same person. I was pretty sure they were both John Sutherland again, which is great. Dude's been so generous. Uh, and if it's not him, it's Von Rick, who has been similarly generous. But I'm pretty sure it was John Sutherland. Uh, so thank you for this stuff. Really cool. Awesome. Also, as I said, uh, it's been a couple of weeks since my last video, and that's partly because, uh, if you recall, my computer did die a few weeks ago. Uh, it was the CPU. Apparently, it decided to get fried while I was cleaning out dust bunnies and cat fur, so there was that. But also, part of it is just, you know... After a while, I kind of didn't want to. Uh, I was working on my animation when the computer came back, and it's looking really good. I mean, it's some of my best work ever. So there's that, but also, you know, honestly, I was just like, ugh. I mean, this video right here that you just watched, I started it around 11 a.m., and it's now 4.05 p.m. So needless to say, these things can take a while, and it can really start to wear on you after a bit, uh, and by the time I get to the bloopers I just want to be done so I, I just sort of procrastinate a lot because I didn't want to but I'm back now we'll see how long it lasts okay until next time fellow space travelers this is bionic dance saying don't run on automatic instead please think but my confidence at least in a mm. Lower my confidence that any conclusions made from the data are voweled one voweled wob vowel voweled ones. A E I O U because when what we're told is so is put up against what we can see, what we can detect, and upon what which we uh, fuck me. <sighs> and just look at the sheer number of things accepted as factually show sh actually fuck. Failure to contribute will result in suspended oxygen privileges. Attention citizens! Failure to contribute will result in suspended oxygen privileges. Attention citizens!